Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Let's begin our today's session. We have a brainstorm today focused on the topic implementation of huge investment projects, how to attract uh, long money. If you let me, let me introduce uh, key participants of today's brainstorm. Our speakers, Chairman uh, Bartley, Mr. Yeznets, Chairman of the Board, Mr. Mintz, uh, Leader of the Department uh, Financial of Project Financing, VTB, VTB Capital, Mr. Pankrat, our General Director, Eurasia, uh, Mr. Lee Timmins, Minister of the Government of Russia, Head of the Department of Foreign Economic Relations and International, uh, Sergei Rumin. And um, Mr. Reshetnik, of, uh, Head of the Department of Economic Policy and Development. Uh, maybe not alphabetically, I apologize. Dear colleagues, let me uh, uh, we shall deviate from the main topic of the forum which is focused on urbanistic issues. And let's talk about the investments. The issue of investment investments is an integral part of any development, including urban development, especially when saying about the city of Moscow and uh, we speak about implementation of huge investment projects. It's no secret that as of today, we implement a large of a number of large projects, both in Moscow and in Russia as a whole. And so doing, it's no secret. Uh, there are essential limitations in attracting uh, borrowed uh, funds, both internal, domestically, and externally. Uh, the reasons are both institutionalized uh, from the point of view of tools uh, and, the, and the, uh, the issue of resources and the availability of these financial resources. The key issues we want to discuss today are the best practices, how to attract and what terms to attract uh, capital, what are the limitations, restrictions, and vice versa, what are the positive trends in development. So the city of Moscow in this regard is indicative and very promising and perspective and a very good site for implementing large investment programs. Uh, a large investment program that we we'll shall discuss today. In order to begin and touch upon the issue of investment parameters and peculiarities uh, in uh, uh, attracting funds, let me give the floor to Mr. Pankratov. Oleg Pankratov, the floor is yours. As representative of uh, institutionalized player on the market of funding, of financing and infrastructure projects. What is your vision on attracting long, long money for implementing large projects? Thank you so much. I'll try to switch on. So far, not very successful. Maybe some technicians may help me. But uh, I will uh, begin uh, without the presentation. In the first place, uh, thank you so much for the introduction. Indeed, I represent the VTB group which today is the leader of investments into the infrastructure sector of Russia. Why we say so? Because we are direct investor in large projects. You know, uh, St. Petersburg Airport of Pulkovo, we invested uh, 1.2 billion along with the partners, including, including Western part, uh, partners and 12 other 
part, uh, airports. As of today, reconstruction is over. We built a new terminal. We built a new business center. We new aprons for parking lots. We built a power engineer uh, power center. We built uh, mechanization facilities. It is a brand new airport now. We we are also investment in the PPP uh, on. Uh, on paid highways, Western Speedway. So it's an example of partnership of the world over. And this project, we finish the construction this year, and uh, before the end of the year, traffic will be opened. It's a good example of our participation in Moscow, uh, St. Petersburg Road, according to the concession agreement with uh, Afterdoor. Also, we are involved in the original development. The first example uh, is a road project in Udmurtia. We build uh, bridges over Kama and Bui River. The construction is not completed yet. The building of the facility and operation is about to begin. VT, v, uh, VTB Group also, uh, we provide project financing, hedging, banking services. We created the expert expertise in this field of operation of paid roads, which is a unique experience. We created expertise in technical supervision. We are able, we have the capability to supervise the uh, infrastructure project, the build, uh, building and commissioning. Oh, you know, it is now working. What I'd like to talk about first, about the concession and PPP. It is a perfect way to attract project funding and attract long money into, inv into the infrastructure project. It is something to release budget funds. Uh, I gave you an example of Pulko Airport. No budget ruble was invested or euro was invested into Pulko Airport. It's private. It was funded privately by a syndicate consisting of 13 banks uh, Russian banks, uh, for, uh, among Russian banks, only VTB. Uh, we were not members of the syndicate. We were a inv controlling investor and also invested uh, tangible asset, assets. Why PP and concession projects are good? Because they cover the whole life cycle of the project, from project, from the design to construction, funding, financing, repair, maintenance, etc. Definitely. Here you can see examples what banks looks at in attracting funds. We fund uh, uh, when financing concessions and PPP projects. I am giving those examples. 1.2 billion in Pulkovo, 210 into Western uh, speed diameter. Then Moscow, St. Petersburg, 80 billion rubles. Why I'm saying so? Tangible assets may be attracted on the market. Our latest and most interesting example, maybe we'll face financing of M11, Moscow, St. Petersburg Road, where infrastructure bonds were issued. Well, for the first time, we applied uh, the new legislation which allows us to transfer the pledge of rights under the uh, concession agreement to the pledge holders. Uh, so it was distributed among six pension funds. It's a new tool. Maybe not completely new. It was used before and much talk about. But it's just another proof that such market uh, uh, is possible. Let me note also what is interesting for Moscow. Look at this slide. We, the potential for PPP project is big. There are some ratings that say that Moscow F today is a region or subject number one in terms of development PPP partnership. But large projects accept uh, the the uh, replicating Kutuzov Avenue Road involving big capital investments are not implemented under concession or PPP 
agreements. We have a great potential light rail uh, transport, paid roads and uh, uh, routes, waste processing plants and social infrastructure facilities. Uh, it is interesting. In Russia, we have, don't have so many projects to create social infrastructure, schools, uh, hospitals, which, uh, which is quite strange. Because when I began this work in VTB, I thought it will be the main direction of my work. Regrettably, for a number of reasons, we, we don't, the state does not allow us to partake so much, to participate in this sort of PPP partnership. Now, let me say again and underscore the topic of today's panel discussion is how to attract long money. As of today, uh, well-structured and concessions, the money for them, money is available on the market where four major banks, including VTB, active players, uh, pension funds like Yuka Leader, pension leader of VTB, Blago Sustoyenia, a number of pension funds which are prepared to participate and to invest. The money is available. Uh, in, even under sanction, expert financing is not forbidden. If you operate with a foreign uh, contractor, you can attract Western money, Chinese money, etc. As of today, money is available. What we lack as investor is the projects. From our point of view, the main issues are two. Pull up a pipeline project. We'd like to see the state subjects of Federation Moscow. Now, a very interesting initiative from, uh, emanates from Ross uh, After Door, which support regional project by state funds Two tenders are now underway in Khabarovsk uh, and quite soon. And uh, tender bids uh, will be applied in July. And in Perm, another roads and bridges will be built in Perm. Quite interesting and very interesting. And the I initiative and the market welcomes it. We should work, we should prepare such projects better. And you will hear more about that, but the market begins, is picking up. Habarovsk never did such projects. Now there's a process of training and learning, but it's very interesting for the market to see such projects. And perhaps the last thing I'd like to say, there is positive experience in terms of using pension funds and for financing infrastructure projects. Perhaps we could do more. And regulatory restrictions are no more. We should uh, develop this market more actively, work with pension funds. There are examples where bonds are distributed uh, among large number of pension funds are quite positive. And uh, let me advertise, uh, it's just an example of uh, various bonus, uh, various awards. VTB Capital got for both the international awards when our projects were recognized best uh, in projects in the world in terms of infrastructure. Thank you so much for your kind attention. If you let me, let me, so I would suggest um, discussing all the issues on the agenda first. And let's uh, keep 20, 15 minutes for questions and answers at the end. This seems to be the optimal way. If you let me, next, uh, next speaker is uh, Leonid Alexandrovich. Given that VTB Capital, as one of the leaders of the market, sees a great potential in developing a, a private-public partnership in the Moscow region and in Moscow. Actually, the corp corporation Mabi has a long history and a huge experience, and there are best practices in implementing long-term project in various spheres, both transport and sports. 
in your view, in your opinion, what are the major tools and trends that you see with regard to the real situation and real conditions concerning long money? What is the potential of your company in using PPP partnership, maybe some uh, mixed project uh, concerning uh, with the application for transport infrastructure, some hub, uh, Himke 2, which is uh, one of the biggest hubs in Mos in the whole country, if we take the aviation hubs. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Two points I'd like to make. First of all, the periods are over, the three points is continuing. I'll try to explain. The first points, such as the point building, finished just like any well-established province. Whether it's good or bad, maybe it's good. Perhaps it's good because people are trying to follow other people. People are gathering because of the common interests. If in Moscow you open a new restaurant, then people don't come to look interiors, but to meet with people with whom they have common interests. There are groups of restaurants where clients, the Novik of Delos, Kins restaurants, in the same manner, people leave out of good examples. We have Silicon Valley, where you have people of certain interests and views on life. Silicon Valley is not administrative territory. It doesn't have mayor's office. They don't have master plan. They have ID and community. So the efforts made by the Moscow province government, especially government of Moscow, in creating large territories for construction, this is right. This is modern. And this is what exactly is starting to work now. In this sense, I'd like to say Thank you to the government of Moscow. We have two ministers, and Sergei Chiramin, the minister of foreign relationship, especially Maxim Reshetnikov, who had spent a lot of time, and he will tell us about this, about the success of comprehensive development of PPP. They are good, good guys, especially industrial zone statute. The statute everyone looked at including entrepreneurial community, not very friendly. They said, how is that possible, the right to manage your real estate, to dispose it if you don't have direct economic mechanisms that work in developed economies in order to introduce inefficient property. Perhaps the comprehensive mechanisms will work. And the statute on industrial parks may be as the principle of personnel in McKinsey, grow or leave, or introduce in the center of the city the facility, the real estate piece that corresponds to modern requirements. Otherwise, you have to sell according to agreed upon price. That's right. Transportation facilities, the large ones, that, such as the third railway circle, this is and only this way we can change the city. The state has a function doing strategy and uh, formation of the territories. State, we mean government of Russia, government of the region. We need conditions for investors. Money go follows people, and people are following people who they are interested in. The time of sellers has gone. The real estate sellers is time is gone, maybe it's time for the buyers, now it's time for investors, and in general, although it may sound strange, people are led not by calculations but psychology, and psychology is oftentimes symmetric. There is a number of the dissertations written, such as the Lemon Theory, the latest psychology, Nobel Prize. The logics hint us, mathematical logics. When prices go down, you have to buy. When the prices go up, you have to sell. People do exactly opposite. When prices go down, people don't buy and they wait. What if prices go even further down? When prices go up, people are rushing to buy. In this sense, why hurray crisis? Because it seemed that at some point to enter with small capital into big projects 
in established economy is very difficult, almost impossible. Nowadays we have startup and investments time because numerous projects don't feel interest of investors and the landowners and we can feel ourselves come with the land plus they say just take something your professionals you will be able to survive and we sit on this piece of land don't know what to do about this piece of land the time has come when you come back to the middle of 90s when my three good fellows gathered with minimal capital together maybe it's a secret the name is Mikhail Evgeny and Andrei Melnichenko, MD, Misha, John Melnik is 10 billion capitalization. They started from the capital of several thousand dollars. The time has come like this with real estate, with small money and proper leverage, you can raise big projects. That's why the bottom is the time to buy. It's the trend today, but investors behave any investors, buyers of apartments, buyers of real estate, buyers of Tverskaya offices that three years ago was not possible to buy $15,000. Now you can buy for $4,000. They're careful. They say, let's wait. They will wait till explosive price for real estate and the open of opportunity, window of opportunity will be closed. Now have shortage of money and shortage of institutional money. Madmitri quite well told us about this. This is right deficit of institutional money. He's a big specialist in this area. He will tell us perhaps about this. We see that institutional long money is absent. There is no structure of pension funds. There's no mutual funds who come to us and say, hey, we need to plant our money somewhere. As for 24, 27% interest rate, we build, we don't trade, we don't sell weapons on international markets. I don't know what is their margin, but real estate interest is not high. Since there is no demand, there is no supply. There is no supply for institutional money. I have many times said our proposals at international exhibitions for real estate, they are different from others. You come to Longman stand and there's 20 flash cards and they say the facility size purchase auction you can buy and start building you come to us we have big territory of some province maybe sometime late we build city garden now I'm asking what can I buy no nothing you can buy now we have big province we will develop they don't sell the story once again briefly two trends one trend is about having time now to invest and time to buy so people exactly don't do this and the crisis has a big window of big opportunities opening and reasonable to take advantage of if someone is able to take advantage of the moment during next cycle being on the top of the wave will be successful just many our fellows that started 10 years ago practically with zero thank you very much Dmitry Borisovich, looks like there's a question with the help of Leonid. I'd like to ask a question to you. M considering that the group of companies is type of institutional long money company and the institutional long money for you is one of the key, key interest spheres, you can say so. What do you think? The institutional long money, is this enough or not enough? Or we need to correct somehow? Thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to agree with the colleague from VTB. He says that money is there on the market, but there are certain regulations that restrict the usage of this money. In particular, don't allow to use pension money to do whatever you please in the form whatever you please the central bank since started to regulate the industry quite clearly set the border lines of what is possible what is not possible very little is possible now however just like we used example of the Moscow St. Petersburg road the infrastructural obligations issue our fund participated in this floating as the leader because we 
took on ourselves big volume on the wave of enthusiasm, we performed the duty from the party and the government. Infrastructural obligations and pension money invest into this. In principle, we're absolutely in favor. And VTB made a product that even seems, no matter how you look at it, it's good. Nothing wrong, we can say, except this is the only infrastructural obligation, a bond, that exists on the market. So it's over. Nothing else, unfortunately, is available. Why? It's difficult to say in many ways, because many people don't know how to work as VTB, unfortunately, for some reason, for some reason, don't want to do it. Because for big number of uh, companies that participate in infrastructural projects, it's easier to go to web and convince web it's quite uh, easier rather than issue bonds and spread public information into the outer space. If something goes wrong, everyone will know. If it's a state bank, you can go and rearrange things. A big number of people are afraid to go to the public markets for infrastructural money that is there. And funds have no place to invest. They are afraid of volatility. The funds want long-term liquidity is long-term, and the rates are good, so we think they will be worse after some time, and we would fix them. We don't have, unfortunately, a product. That's why, if there's more examples of realized by VTB, such as road between Moscow and St. Petersburg, more money from pension funds will go in for infrastructural projects. It's 100 percent true. Seems to me that Moscow, as the city, can contribute somehow because there is a number of ideas on the surface. It seems that they are not in traditional school of thought for realization. For some time, we wrote a number of ideas. There are underground parking that should be built, but no one builds. And this city doesn't have money, and it is clear it doesn't have money, because there's a lot of other priorities, so it's difficult to do. But if the city says, I want to build underground parking, you can let it for 25 years. I think those who will to build parking lot will be 100 people. They would queue up the lineup where you can find real estate with the risk of uh, tenants such as Moscow and long-term contract. And for Moscow, in certain right scenario, it could cost zero because in all the world, parking is operated by Vinci and another number of other operators who m make money. But investors are afraid of this operational risk. Moscow doesn't have to be afraid of the risk because it doesn't have commercial goal. It's all social issue. With positive scenario, Moscow could not only solve social objective, but even earn. It seems to me that there are many that type of the infrastructure facilities. It can be done in the like manner. It can be done for private money, not for the public budget money. Maybe even bring some revenue to the city of Moscow. It seems like a way that is not researched, but I think it can be researched. And investors in this country, the institutional non-pension money, are lacking products of such quality. Mr. Timmins will comment, I hope. Many Western people and Western investors, and once again, maybe in normal time, not during the sanction time, they would like to look at 25-year contract with the city of Moscow would be cheapest, it will be less capital costs, the, less, the least interest rate. It seems to be good for everyone. Everyone will win. Thank you very much. If you allow, Maxim Gennadievich, seeing upcoming question, I give the floor to you. In your view, 
is this institutional question, lack of products? Because Moscow in the recent times had breakthrough in terms of attracting long money for infrastructure. And we know this position during last year, position is improved. Where is, in your view, development zone? Yes, at first I'd like to say a few words about experience that we have. Simply colleagues from VTB told us about Moscow, said that just one concession there is. In the last five years, different forms of PPP concluded for half trillion rubles. We practice not only concession as the form of business, we have long-term contracts within which half of the city gets rid of the waste. So there is a service and then operators invest into the into waste dumps. dumps. We have life cycle contracts. In the last time we renew rolling stock for the Moscow subway. We launched new model of the city passenger surface transport. When we pay transport work and the carriers hire drivers, they hire depots, buy rolling stock according to the city standards. They operate all of this and have money for the transport operation. We have a large practice of attraction of investments into social facilities, so-called ruble programs. When we take real estate properties, used to be kindergartens, schools, and for one ruble, we give out organizations on the condition they invest there and they render social services, providing diversity of services in the city. And the Moscovites will have opportunity to choose. Now, if we say this PPP in more broader sense, of course, PPP can looked at can be looked at as the comprehensive something, and all developer projects get there, such as zeal project, exploration of zeal territory. Formerly, there is risk division. There is duty, what investors build, what city builds, how much investors pay to the city. That are the same projects with Luberetsky field project, long-term project we are forced to carry out and complete. There is new Moscow project that is actively being developed and there's comprehensive development as well. There are so many projects and many much of practice is being accumulated always with investors we are not in simple dialogue because investors we have are two types the in financial investors and Dima gave us a very good example with ideology let us build tall tall parking and you give us the load schedule such approach can be but in this case, the question comes, what's the reason for the city to attract the money? The city, under our budget situation, with our debt burden, can be cheaper than any commercial organization. From this standpoint, we built also pretty much under the same conditions. Even more so, construction process, when we build ourselves, we control oftentimes better. We observe schedule. We don't have risks that investors have. And honestly, we look away sometimes when we build ourselves. So it's obvious for us to build a facility, it's easier. We, our interest to PPP is where investors is ready to operate, where he assumes risks. From this standpoint, this project of the North Double Road, this is flagship, and we want to multiply this practice in the North west uh, diameter so northern double road of kutuzovsk avenue is very complex structure that intertwines with many interests that investors assumed responsibility to have traffic risks the operational invest at the same time even with this structure we made some exclusion the thing is there is a bottleneck where it's not clear what will be the scheme and what will be conditions is the entrance to the Moscow city. We agreed if the traffic problem happens because of the entrance to Moscow city, we'll have mechanism of compensations. Next, you absolutely correctly said that the key source of money in the economy is pension money. And we realize that under any scenario, if we want pension money in the project, 
we must guarantee at least return with minimal minimal profit related to inflation. The other thing that pension money is 85% and 15% of money from private owners. We agreed that for this pension money, one scheme of money return under different conditions of annulment. And uh, as for the equity investment, this is different condition. In all concession agreement, if we look closer, 80% of the text is terms and conditions regarding termination because of the guilt of the city. Many things can happen in 30 years. The city comes back and says he wants to take the road back because of some circumstances. On the most northern double road of Kutuzovsky Avenue, and the risks are different. All these conditions must be written down, and 80% of concession agreement is all kinds of variants. Who pays whom? What's the interest? Under what terms? And we realized that, good question, what we're lacking. Discussion is now on the way. Minister of Finance, there are tools, the money is not. The vice versa, there's much more, uh, more money in the economy. Pension funds alone, uh, half a trillion money uh, in highly liquid tools. Let's uh, expedite the movement of concessions, promotion of this one source, fund of uh, national welfare. The decision is taken, but the decision were not implemented, and this money did not come to the economy ye yet. The tools are there. Law application, legal practice, uh, law application practice is not sufficient. PPP now is not a subject for the politicians to discuss. Political, all is done. All these local, all these slogans are met. All the laws are adopted. PPP is the sphere for professionals now. We should sit down and specifically specify and outline the risks understand the interests of which particular party. Let me get back to what Dmitry said. Uh, the, let's say the city assumes a social function and gets a guarantee. We used to have a practice. We analyzed a lot of projects and terminated a lot of previous uh, contracts where under the slogans the city had to buy uh, products at a prices two or three times higher than the market price because of the social slogans and we stopped distributing the risks uh, so this is a hazardous topic each of the stakeholders should understand its own interest should understand the tools and the legislative framework should sit down and work on the terms let me emphasize again, Moscow did not only accumulate a lot of experience, we are moving forward and we see some problems because five years passed, something goes awry at all times because life is more difficult than you imagine. We should be flexible and change things flexibly and we must be open and transparent to exchange this information because we have the same problems. We call upon to cooperation, openness and to professional discussion on all this issue. Thank you. I'd like to, as a follow-up, but the actual funding, I want to. Uh, I'd like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Lee Timmins. From the point of view of foreign investment and uh, foreign capital in Moscow and in Russia generally, it seems to us and to this. There's a great potential. What is your vision? How to attract long money, given that you also operate, you operate funding, you operate huge funds. What about the long investments to Moscow project and generally, and generally in Russia? Long money in Russia. Thank you very much. Um, just as a bit of a back background, um, we have invested over $3 billion of projects with uh, close to um, $2 billion of equity over our history here in Russia. We currently have about $1.6 billion of project. And 
what is interesting is that we did so through a series of funds. Initially, they were short to medium term funds where our investment horizon would be five to 10 years. But one of the more interesting ones that we've done recently in the past few years had a target life of 24 years. Now that's very long money. And I think the goal for long money is to have long-term investors with lower required returns, lower required IRRs or income returns, because that can fund very large-scale projects and with a long-term horizon, and we think that's very interesting. Some of our shareholders in our various funds include some of the world's largest sovereign wealth funds and pension funds. We actually think those groups of, of investors, sovereign wealth funds, pension funds, international pension funds, make very good candidates for long investment horizons. There are a few challenges and there are some things that the government can do to improve or increase the flow of that money and to reduce the cost of that money. And I think I'd like to go into a couple of those. But before I do, I want to comment that it is my judgment, having been in Russia for over 20 years, that the tide is turning. It's been a difficult period for the past three or four years, but I think we have turned the corner. We are seeing a lot more interest from some of our long investors, long-term investors from the Middle East, from Asia, and even from Europe. North America will be a little bit slower in coming, but I think certainly sovereign wealth funds will come back sooner rather than later. I think what, it, what, does, and what do investors that want to invest long-term really look for? They look for stability of the income after tax income for the long term. They're interested in, if they're going to invest in PPPs or infrastructure or commercial projects, they want stable income. So Russia, in my judgment, has to think about what the government can do. Something the government cannot do. They cannot control the price of oil. The government cannot control currency fluctuations. But it can control the stability and the um, response the government makes to various things such as infrastructure projects. So I'll give you two examples that we have had, one in China and one in India, one good, one bad, where we were making major investments. In China, we were making investment where the government was planning on transport infrastructure, metro, roads, universities, around a site where we were investing. The China government gave us a timeline and met the timeline ahead of schedule, which for us as an investor was fantastic because as we were investing, all of the infrastructure we planned to be there when we finished was finished and was completed. That was tremendous. The not so good example was in India where we were investing and the road infrastructure, a ring road, was delivered about 10 years late. Now, that really hurts us as an investor and makes it very difficult for us to plan uh, the success of our investment. So timing of infrastructure and completion of that is very critical. The second thing is we are focused on, and our investors, sovereign wealth funds, pension funds, are focused on after-tax returns. Now, what the competitive countries around the world are doing is creating tax-efficient structures such as real estate investment trusts or other things like that. Now, Russia has done that with the PIF structure, ZPIF structure, but I think it needs improvements for international investors because other countries are doing REITs or infra infrastructure uh, investment programs. So I think if the government, principally the federal government, can create tax-efficient structures where groups like, that can come in can be certain that they can have a very effective after-tax return. It may mean the government gives up certain tax revenues, but it creates a simplicity of investment. Now the government has done deofshorization, so the way to do it is to add to that either a REIT structure or some other tax-efficient structure, and that will attract 
major international sovereign wealth funds or pension funds that can be certain about their, their income stream in the future. Of course, domestic players will have to pay the taxation, but the international players can stimulate investment, stimulate commercial involvement, and then stimulate, I think, dramatic investment in infrastructure, private-public partnerships, et cetera. So I would say infrastructure timing, on-time infrastructure development, transport, et cetera, and increasing and improving the tax-efficient structures because all of the other competitive companies and countries are doing that. Mexico, uh, UK, France, Turkey, they're all doing it. India is doing it. So that is a competitive landscape. International investors can choose where in the world they go. So to create something that is equivalent to what's happening elsewhere in the world will improve and speed that investment by sovereign wealth funds, pension funds, and have the long-term low-cost money stimulate the economy. And that's what we're uh, looking forward to over the next few years. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Timmins. Timmins. Sergey, with regard to Mr. Timmins said, the important role of the state in implementing the investment projects. The city of Moscow is quite active in cooperating with the investors, including international world. What is the what is the major points of focus? What are the major tasks in your view? Thank you so much. In the first place, let me thank such patriots of foreign investments like Heinz Company, for who for many years has been present on the Russian market and gave a lot of examples of uh, stories of success. Uh, colleagues from BTB uh, uh, didn't mention one project which I admire, which it was structured very well. It didn't happen under sanctions when hostile measures were not yet adopted against four major banks, Gazprom, BTB, Gazprom banks. These banks now set the tune now in terms of long-term financing and our sources of funds. It was, like it was said correctly, upon the guidance, at the guidance of the government, and not because the market situation motivates them for financing. One of the vivid examples that was structured in Moscow, I took part in it, reconstruction of a dynamo residential neighborhood, along with the stadium construction, uh, 1.5 worth 1.5 euro with participation uh, called this Italian contractor with a guarantee such a guarantee I believe that such guarantees should be repeated in Moscow successfully not only in the sphere of construction and Maxim was quite right in saying that in the absence of long money Moscow began uh, signing contract for the life cycle, which had not happened before historically. And the first big contract made for the supply of, of railway cars for the metro uh, to the amount of $800 million with the, with the Metro Wagon Mesh Company and the Stom Company. It shows, the contract shows, there is a possibility of replacing under the conditions of economical crunch. I don't support Lenin, he's my good friend. Uh, he left uh, Ure crisis. No, we shouldn't be happy. Uh, crisis makes you sober. It's a sort of a cold shower to us. Nevertheless, such contracts like a life cycle contract or service agreements, we're working with one of the foreign companies, a model 
for the lighting, city lighting under a service agreement. A very interesting model. Hopefully my colleagues will support it. And this way this city transferred to outsourcing a tangible part of services. So this is a hidden part of PPP. Not through long-term money. Not through long money. I quite agree with Maxim. The city today can attract a lot of money today uh, when talking to foreign banks, we feel and sense the rigid discontent. Why wouldn't you issue euro bonds? We could give 10, 30 billion for Moscow. A lot of uh, money is available on the market. There is a wish to fund. Um, banks cannot do that, uh, but regions can be financed. Uh, there was never any default. We always uh, met our obligations. So this, uh, we have a hidden liquidity pillow, if you will. What else? Today, to attract long money, we should need some target projects. One of the vivid examples is a 33 clinic. Clinic 33 is one of the good examples. Uh, the concessioner is a um, European medical center. Moscow will continue such practice of attracting concessions. Uh, the most important thing is the, that the state should support us. Lately, on the legislative level, serious initiatives were taken. Recently, the president signed the law on the concessions, which seriously expands the range of possible range of cooperation of investors with this state. Earlier, before, we had uh, we had conferences. Nobody could even structure a concession agreement. It was a paradox. It, it was very convoluted legislation. And there were no regional legislation, no measures to regulate concession transactions. So we lost years. Starting from 2009 to 2000. To 2014 or 13 before the before the crisis began and sanctions were imposed. If there is an interest for long-term investment by foreign investors, one year, one week ago, I took part in with the such a, and and with Codest. Uh, this is an Italian company. It's about uh, one billion. Intesa Bank displays interest. It causes huge interest. Uh, all uh, other. Financial institutions are interested to uh, to give funds for 10 or 15 years. Tim said that we made a fund of a sh short term and uh, term for five to 10 years. In Moscow today, it's a long term credit. 10 years, it's beyond the fantasy. You have developer. We have developers here uh, which implement projects including the project, the amusement park on Borisovsky Ponds, Borisovsky Prudy, and we got the permission for that. Such uh, assets are available, but without support of the state, nothing doing. And historical experience says so. When during the Great Depression in the United States of America, the government declared a large scale reconstruction of the infrastructure. And during three or four years, they built about 50,000 large scale facilities in the United States, which later became the backbone of the US economy, a huge an explosion in the economy and, and, uh, and supported the US during World War II and supported uh, uh, post-war rapid development of the economy. So we have every chance to attract funds now of both the national welfare funds and the pension funds that could create infrastructure funds. And these infrastructure funds could be an anchor in the, in the vital projects for the states. <laughs> so before the state gives a good example that it shares the risks, at least 20%, 30% of risks, 
it will be difficult for us before the state says that uh, it shares, it prepared to share 20 or 30 percent of risks, it will be difficult. So, regrettably, the latest statistics Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'd like to ask apology, apology from the speakers and from you, dear guests. I'm sure that the colleagues they'll privately answer the questions. Not because the time frame is over. Just two statements that, as the summary, I'd like to make. What I noted for myself during the speeches, for national resources, including institutional loan, are there, and there is demand to structure them well, to elaborate, and the professionals should work. We need infrastructure, and this is a very important question for long money. Crisis is the time of, of opportunity, I would formulate like this. And the most important aspect is that the interest of investors, including foreign investors, to the Moscow province for large investment projects is very high. At this positive note, I'll finish. Thank you very much. Have a good day.